Colorado can't catch a break. As three fires grow, a fourth starts in Boulder County. More evacuations, more worry, and now heartbreak as we learn of the first Coloradan killed in this string of wildfires. Our team coverage tonight stretches up and down the front range. There is resolve in northern Colorado to go on with a community tradition, even if it means moving evacuated animals again and warning people about what's in the air. If you have vulnerable family members and friends, you might want to think about changing your plans. And amid all that, we keep our weekly tradition of gathering as Coloradans to support a group that's making an impact in our state. It just so happens to be in Jefferson County, home of one of the worst fires, the place where next is tonight. Tonight, it is a firefight on four fronts along Colorado's front range. A new fire has started every day this week and all continue to burn tonight. It has become a test of both resolve and resources with optimism for every incremental win also tempered by the realization that with so much of Colorado being so hot and so dry, new fires beyond those four are likely. We're here in Jefferson County near C-470 in Kipling, watching the quarry fire, which sparked last night. It was actually spotted by a deputy out on, out on patrol when it was only 10 feet wide. Within an hour, it had grown to 50 acres. The largest fire in our state is the Alexander Mountain Fire. That's in the foothills west of Loveland. It started Monday. The Stone Canyon Fire began yesterday, just north of Lyons. It burned several homes, and today we learned one person was killed four firefighters injured. And then just three hours ago, a fourth fire started near Gross Reservoir in Boulder County. So we're here at the Quarry Fire in Jefferson County. It looms over the Deer Creek Mesa neighborhood and more than 200 acres have burned. And that was an estimate before some very active fire behavior that we saw mid afternoon. A number of neighbors uh, neighborhoods have been evacuated. This hilltop that we are on is kind of a safe spot. This neighborhood is not yet even put on pre evacuation notice and it provides a vantage point for neighbors to watch what's going on with this fire, which through the afternoon was very aggressive crowning through the treetops on two flanks, both the eastern flank right above the Deer Creek Mesa neighborhood and also toward the interior of the fire in a northward movement as it moves up behind Lockheed Mountains Deer Creek facility. There was a relentless air assault this afternoon from more than a dozen fixed wing aircraft and helicopters. There were drops once a minute for a period of time around 3.30 today, and that appeared to make a significant difference to get this fire to lay down. Clearly, even with so many fires burning along the front range, the proximity to a large number of homes made this one a priority. There are nearly 600 homes in this area that are evacuated across five different neighborhoods. Deer Creek Mesa, as I mentioned, Sampson, Maxwell, McKinney, and the Murphy subdivisions. All those folks have been told to get out. People in Silver Ranch and Silver Ranch South are under pre evacuation orders. At this point, no homes have burned, no injuries have been reported. The Sheriff's Office is stressing that all of those neighborhoods are still at risk, and there is very little that they can do on the ground right now with this fire in such rocky terrain. This fire is, is not an easy fight. The terrain is treacherous, it is very steep. That terrain is not conducive to a ground fight. It's not a fight you're going to win. Uh, we can make a dent, hopefully, but with only 75 sets of boots on the ground on that terrain, that's a tough fight. What we witnessed this afternoon was an absolute show of force from the air. Small helicopters dipping into the Man Reservoir, which is just over the ridge behind me, an air tanker dropping thousands of gallons of fire retardant around the burn area, and other aircraft are pulling water out Chatfield Reservoir, which is just to the east of here. Chatfield is closed for the time being to make room for that operation. Our Evan Krugel has spent the day in Jefferson County talking with neighbors who have been evacuated or fear that they might be evacuated. and and. Evan, it, it is, it's both stressful, but also a relief, at least for folks that I've talked to, to be able to have this vantage point to watch the fire that is threatening their homes. 
Yeah, certainly mixed emotions at that area, Kyle. We spent much of the day up at that vantage point where at one point well over 100 people had, had gathered to watch this fire. We've now moved a couple of miles down the ridge from you. This is the roadblock at Deer Canyon Road leading into that main subdivision where a lot of those folks are right now. We have seen uh, people lining the roads throughout this entire area, not just up at that vantage point, trying to catch a glimpse of this fire as it continues to grow this evening. As you mentioned, Kyle, about 600 homes do remain under evacuation right now. Firefighters stressing everyone in the surrounding neighborhoods should be ready to evacuate if those winds shift based on how fast this fire has been spreading. Now we're told deputies actually went door to door in a handful of these subdivisions uh, just after midnight. That includes the Deer Creek Mesa this morning. Uh, essentially telling people they needed to get out immediately. We spoke with one woman, Marcia Anker, who wasn't home at the time. She hasn't been able to return home since. Uh, I've been house sitting at my daughter's, so I wasn't at home when the evacuation came in, so I wasn't able to take anything. Fortunately, I have my dogs with me, but um, I'm just really sad about what's happening in our world, and right here now by me, where my house is, Now, the county has set up an evacuation shelter. That's at Dakota Ridge High School. That's down on Coal Mine Avenue in Littleton. They have cots and snacks for people there to rest up. Even uh, dogs uh, and cats are allowed inside uh, the school there this evening. Uh, two other subdivisions do remain on pre-evacuation notice. Those are the Silver Ranch and Silver Ranch South. Again, firefighters asking anyone in this immediate vicinity to essentially be ready in case those winds shift. Kyle, we've been talking about resources and how uh, stretched thin they are on all of these fires so far today. I can tell you just in the last five minutes, we just saw a fire truck from Chafee County and the San Juan Hotshots heading up this road uh, into Deer Creek Canyon Park. Those locations both well over three hours away from here. So resources certainly starting to pour in from across the state. Kyle. All hands on deck. Evan Krugel, thank you very much. The newest fire is also the smallest. It's burning in Boulder County near Gross Reservoir off Lakeshore Drive. Within the last 15, 20 minutes, the Boulder County Sheriff's Office confirmed that two structures were impacted. Their words, we could see from Sky 9 that at least one of those is a home uh, that burned today. People in the Lakeshore Drive area were told they needed to evacuate immediately. Firefighters are calling this the Lakeshore Fire. Within the last hour, firefighters said that it had grown to about five or six acres again, relatively small compared to the other fires. And they also said that they were able to get a good line of retardant around that fire. Our Angeline McCall is up in Boulder County at a spot that has been offered to folks who need to uh, get out of the way of that Lakeshore fire. Angeline. Yeah, Kyle, we did visit that evacuation site um, down in Boulder, the city of Boulder. Now, there was no one there at 5 o'clock, so that evacuation site is about an hour away at least with road closures from the actual fire, and so we don't expect people to get there until later tonight. You can see all of the smoke that this fire is producing behind me. Now, we're on Flagstaff Road, and so far we've seen several uh, fire uh, departments come through, sheriff vehicles as well. Like Kyle, you mentioned, we know that two structures have been impacted. And most important to note of this fire is that it's been um, human caused. Now, they're, they're not saying the exact reason right now as to what the cause was, but they have identified at least two people that they believe are involved in potentially starting this fire. I don't know the exact details. Um, it does sound like there are individuals working on a property in that area. I don't know exactly what they were doing, but we are talking to them about how the fire started. No arrests have been made as of right now, just talking with those two people. Important to note, too, you know, when we stopped into the evacuation center, uh, the, the theme really of the conversations was PTSD. We drove through Louisville and Superior to get up here um, to this area where the Gross uh, Reservoir uh, Lakeshore fire been called is now burning. Uh, we haven't gotten a good vantage point, but you can just see as you're driving up areas that the Marshall Fire hit, the NCAR Fire, the Dinosaur Fire, and so people here are really on edge. Kyle. 
Understandably, Angeline McCall reporting from Boulder County. Thank you, Angeline. So we have just learned late this afternoon that four firefighters were injured in fighting the Stone Canyon fire, which started yesterday north of Lyons, and one person died in that fire. The Boulder County Sheriff confirmed that that human remains was found inside one of five structures in total that burned. We don't know yet if it was the burned out house that we saw from the air yesterday. Investigators have not released the person's name or any other details. That fire is burned nearly 1,600 acres. Firefighters did make solid progress uh, holding the line on the south and the west sides of the Stone Canyon fire. That allowed it, them to lift evacuations within the town of Lyons as that fire continues to burn north and east up into more agricultural and open land. The Alexander Mountain Fire in Larimer County, west of Loveland, is by far the largest fire burning in Colorado right now. More than 6,800 acres. 4,000 people are under mandatory evacuation orders. Another 800 prepared to go. So far, no structures have burned, though firefighters have said flames have reached the area where there are buildings and they're not able to get in to protect them. Today, the governor said that he's activated the National Guard to help where needed and that FEMA is going to cover the cost for most of these firefights. The state's public safety chief is asking all local fire departments that have set personnel out of state to fight fires elsewhere to come back and to contribute to what is going on here. We would love to get to a point where a number of these fires can be fought on the ground with hand crews. The fact remains that a number of these fires are largely aerial operations right now because of the danger it would pose to firefighters and because of the difficult terrain. So each Wednesday around here, you know that we have a weekly tradition of, of rallying the Colorado community around a cause, a nonprofit that's making a positive impact in our state, no matter what the news of the day happens to be. And it just so happens this week, we are supporting a nonprofit cause here in Jefferson County, a cause unrelated to the fire that we're here covering. This week's Word of Thanks micro giving campaign supports the Porchlight Family Justice Center, one stop resource for survivors of violence and their families. For too long, Coloradans who have survived domestic violence sex assault, child abuse, human trafficking, had to go place to place, organization to organization, reliving the horror of their experience in order to get the help they need. That is why the Porchlight Family Justice Center was created. Legal help, therapy, supportive services from a variety of government agencies, law enforcement, nonprofits, community groups, all in one spot. Victims and survivors can share their story once and receive the help that they are waiting for. 75 partner agencies are represented on site there along with childcare. And that's part of it because part of dealing with trauma is not creating more of it by forcing survivors to travel all over the county, arranging childcare, taking time off from their job simply to uh, be able to access resources. To support Porchlight, scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303 871 1491. You have proven that $5 donations add up fast. So, as always, I'll match the first $50 to get things going and thanks to everybody who's making a monthly donation as well. When we return, a community tradition that is determined to continue in this state and also firefighters in Jefferson County have another challenge on top of the fire. It's snakes. That's next. Back at the Quarry Fire in Jefferson County where uh, firefighters just got help from the air. A helicopter dropped. There's two helicopters, two fixed wing aircraft working on this fire. That area assault is key because there's not much that they can do in the rocky terrain that is difficult in any situation. Then you add snakes, lots of snakes. And there's also um, rattlesnake gulch that's in the middle of this. And it's not called that to be a cute name. It's because it is um, prone to have a large population of rattlesnakes. So you have that activity that the firefighters have to, to look for as well. There are tons of prairie rattlesnakes along the front range, particularly in the foothills. We talked to a snake expert at the Denver Zoo who said, you know, snakes like other animals know when there's a wildfire and they also will be on the move and seeking shelter uh, here in this neighborhood. Uh, we watched a pretty impressive buck walk through uh, earlier this afternoon. Neighbors tells it's actually not all that unusual. And I should also mention the buck was walking towards the fire and not away from it. Uh, meteorologist Lauren Robinson, what are we looking at in terms of winds overnight and into tomorrow? 
Well, the good news is winds have stayed pretty calm all day and are going to stay relatively calm over the next few days. That's the one ounce of good news. The not so good news is we're going to stay really hot and very dry. And as we know, that causes some fuel for these fires. We do have four of those wildfires burning along the front range right now. Temperatures not helping. This afternoon, we were in the middle 90s. We're staying in the lower to middle 90s, even at 616 in the evening. As we take a look at our relative humidity, this is another factor that's not really helping. We're as low as 10 to 15 percent relative humidity right now, so that's very dry air. The one small piece of good news have been our wind speeds all day long. We've been seeing those winds maybe gusting up to 15, 20 miles per hour, and even that is in windier areas west of where those fires are, blo uh, are, are, are running right now. So as we take a look at our smoke forecast along the front range in eastern plains, we're just going to continue to watch for that heavy wildfire smoke where those fires are, and then we're looking for additional wildfire smoke coming in from neighboring states. So we have air quality alerts that will be in effect through tomorrow. With that, we're going to see those overnight temperatures in the lower 60s. Tomorrow, temperatures back in the upper 90s. The next seven days, we do stay very hot and very dry. With an enormous smoke plume on the western horizon, the Larimer County Fair is going on as planned at the end of this week. Comes with a health warning. That's next. The Paris Olympics medal count on 9 News is presented by your Front Range Toyota stores. A massive fire in the foothills west of Loveland. Smoke in the air apparently is not going to stop the Larimer County Fair from going on as planned on Friday. Our Jalisa Arizari is along. And Jalisa, with respect, why are they doing this? Yeah, Kyle, despite the air quality getting worse out here, those with the fair say they can still put on an event that is healthy for everyone. They say they've been working with the public health department to monitor the air quality. Right now it's moderate, but they know at any minute that could change. A carnival covered in rides can't compare to the roller coaster of a week. Most definitely, yeah. Luis Romero has half. And changes can happen overnight that can totally change the situation that we're in. Romero is the Larimer County Fair Manager, an event they say more than 100,000 people attend. This year, things may be going in a different direction. Right now, we're still moving forward like it's a full fair. 20 miles away, the Alexander Mountain Fire continues to grow. So do the concerns for the air quality across the county. Yet the fair apparently must go on. Me personally, it's very stressful. I have a husband who has a lung condition. So I am, we are monitoring that AQI very closely to make sure he's safe. The young and the old, those with chronic heart and lung disease, this is going to be a tough day for them. Dr. David Buther is a pulmonologist at National Jewish Health. He says while the current air quality shouldn't be too bad for healthy people, they should still limit their time outside. Spending hours outdoors can cause irritative symptoms like itchy eyes, scratchy throat, uh, headaches, sometimes a cough. So if you're experiencing those symptoms, that may be a sign uh, to back off a little bit. There's a lot of smoke in the air. Um, we're monitoring and making sure that we're still having a fair that's going to be healthy that people can still attend. Romero says coordinators are working with the public health department, sheriff's office, and even the county commissioners have a say in the decision. A choice that seems to go round and round. It is an hour by hour, day by day, um, and anything is possible at the moment. Now the air quality index is at 80 right now, so it impacts the most vulnerable children, older adults. But if it goes up to 150, it could impact even the healthiest people. Now the public health department is hoping to add two air monitors to the fairgrounds property by Friday to keep a closer eye on things. Kyle. All right, Jalisa, thank you. We're back with some really encouraging news about the quarry fire in Jefferson County next. Our word of thanks microgiving this week is supporting a cause in Jefferson County unrelated to the fire. Porchlight Family Justice Center is a one-stop resource for survivors of domestic violence, human trafficking, sex abuse, where they can get all the help they need without having to constantly retell their story. You scan that QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491. Finish with an encouraging note about the quarry fire. This is as tame as that fire has been in the last four hours. What incredible work 
in the air by firefighters today that have got this thing to lay down on both its east and its north flank. We will be right here for you on 9 News at 9 and 10 with updates on this fire and the three other wildfires burning on the front range of Colorado. Thank you for being with us. See you next time.